I moved around a lot when I was a kid. And for me, it was just another part of growing pain, I think, because everyone goes okay. through like the pains of growing up, right? Like through puberty and your joints ache, your voice changes, you're awkward, you don't know how to move, you don't know how to deal with other people. Like I went through all of that, but just in a different respect. When you said I globe trotted, I felt more like I was being tossed around because when you're a kid, you don't really have choice. And I think that's really right. important because that perspective changes the whole experience. If you're being forced to do something, if someone has exiled you to another place, which is what I felt like when I was a kid, leaving my family and my parents to, well, first of all, leaving my very close, immediate family in China to go to Hong Kong with my mom, then to be off in Australia alone, it wasn't out of my volition. It wasn't my choice to do that. I wasn't like an eight-year-old kid going, oh, I'm going backpacking and to learn another culture and in the great land down under. So it was painful. After I graduated from high school, I went backpacking out of my own volition for a couple of years okay. because I was choosing to do so. I think that perspective changes everything. And I think the perspective that I gained in hindsight, looking back, like I will give thee to my younger self from feeling abandoned and feeling like he didn't fit into any place and wasn't there long enough to even learn, didn't even learn the rules of the game, much less how to play the game. In hindsight, I can still take that pain and turn it into something useful and helpful for myself. I'll always remember that's life changing to me is that, that I had this wonderful teacher. She's just the kind of person that exudes so much love and care for her students and she's a really caring person. I think this is the right reason to become a teacher. If you know that every kid is just like a broken little basket trying to blossom, just there to take care of them and curate them and, and give them support because she would see me fight every single day. And once the principal had requested my mom to come in and I was like, oh no, I can face like 10 bullies and I have to fight mm -hmm. them all. And I'd be like, fine. But you're going to shit your pants if it's your mother. The moment they say that we're going to bring your mom in for a talk, I'm like, oh no. So my mom came in. My mom came in and they were in there alone forever, my mom and the principal. And then I was staying with Miss Watkins, just like shaking my booties, like you just said, sh shitting my pants. And then my mom comes around, stands at the homeroom's door. She's about to take me home. I, I had this look at Miss Watkins like, it's, it's been good knowing you. You're so I dead. Miss Watkins, actually, before my mom walked away with me, she took my mom aside and she was like, you know, I see Ludie fight every single day. I see him fight every single day. That's true. But I only see him fight for what he thinks is right. And I really teared up at that moment. Um, it still affects me a lot when I think about it, that someone would stand up for you, especially when the people that are closest to you, especially when, say, the um, Chinese kid who was fighting me, anyone was on my side in this room, it should be you. It wasn't, and that felt like a betrayal. And when I'm fighting these things every single day, these people, these bullies, these people every single day, and the person that you expect to be on your side, hopefully, are your parents just helping you lick your wound or giving you the space and telling you it's going to be all right. But no, you know that at home, you're going to get a rougher beating than you right. will get in school with the bullies. That hurts the most. But at the yeah. unlikeliest moments, when someone actually stands up for you, those instances and those words will carry a lifetime.